there are a number of names that just continue to pop up in my feed. And as someone who was not in Mobile, uh, but obviously consumes quite a bit of draft content, it seems like the conversation really starts with Jackson Powers Johnson, the center out of Oregon. He's played all of the offensive line positions. He seems like maybe the most versatile man in the trenches in quite some time in this draft. What did you see from the Oregon man who does not have a ton of starting experience, but boy, physically seemed to really impress? Yeah, that was one to me when you look at some of the practices, Oregon players really stood out. This was a bit of a common theme for me of, yes, you've got O-line, Powers Johnson, super physical is one that I love watching the matchups with these guys because you look at some of the position groups, like for example, National team. I keep my little notebook here with me because there's so oh, many players. Go. I try to keep it all straight here. Um, so some of the guys he was going against were players that I was looking at. So Tyler Davis from Clemson, for example, uh, would have been on the national team. Or sorry, hold on. Yeah, 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 on the national team against Powers Johnson. So that was one where, you know, I'm looking at okay, Tyler Davis. What's he gonna do? I've seen him. He looks maybe like a top 130 type of pick. And Brandon Dorless from Oregon's another player that. I thought really stood out. So when I talk about Oregon guys standing out, Powers Johnson on one side, Dorless on the other. Uh, Dwayne Carter from Duke, I think, did some good things for his stock by being out there. He was a bit of a fan favorite, media favorite type of guy. So Michael Hall from Ohio State, these are, these are the guys you had going up against Powers Johnson. So when you look at a lot of those guys, I mean, really two of them to me are top 100s, Carter from Duke and Dorless from Oregon. And then the rest of the guys kind of maybe day three looking types of picks. So I always like to start with who they go against. And then with Powers Johnson, it seemed like it didn't really matter who he went against. Being an interior guy, he was able to hold his own. And one-on-ones to me of it really more solidified. I try to stay away from confirmation bias, but I came in knowing that he was good. And I came out saying, okay, I don't think he really changed that. He didn't to me, you know, do the type of thing where, I'm ready to you know put him up at the top of the first round or anything, but I feel like right around where he's been, maybe late first, early second to me sounds about right for a player like him. Interior line, you take into positional value, you take into the fact that he's a little bit versatile, and I start to say, okay, yeah, I think uh, maybe late first, early second's a good landing spot for him. We've seen guys like Zion Johnson that I've felt similarly about in the past at the Senior Bowl, and I think that's about where I would have him did well against good competition and it checks a lot of boxes for me. So I also, you know, don't want to drop him or anything. So that's about where I saw him going. Trey, that, that sounds like music to my ears, man. Late first as a Cowboys fan. Oh, give yeah. me, give me powers. Johnson at 24. I Bring can him see on that. Bring yeah. him on down. So, I'm, or you I'm, trade up in the second, you know, you might be able to get him in the first few first 10 picks in the second round. See, that's fascinating because like I listened to Dane Brugler and he's struggling to get him past 20 uh, with the folks that he's talking to, right? Like he's looking at at Miami. I think Minnesota might be a fit as well. Here's me sitting at 24 praying for interior offensive line help. And I, I don't know if we're going to get it or not. Gracious, how about that? 